Hello YouTube, this is the Java Programmer. And in this video, I've been promising the last several videos, we'll actually graph this uh, EMA set. Uh, so I think the time has come, unless we run into other issues. But uh, let's look at what we've got so far. So in the last video we ran, we saw that these numbers lined up, or the timestamps lined up. So pretty confident that that is correct. So we're going to delete this. Um, we don't need these two because they're getting run every time. So here is our code. We're going to get 360 entries. We're going to compute the EMA. We should probably call this EMA 20 because that's what it is. So we're going to, we want to chart the EMA 20. So let's look at our update points we wrote this method a couple videos ago but we realized that we needed the timestamps because one of the things that we see here when we do bars we create this uh, data item which requires a timestamp so uh, I need to quickly look to see how we graph uh, a line versus bars, and I'll be right back. Here in our update data points method, um, there is many different ways to chart these data points. And I've had to do some investigation on what the best method is. And I think uh, what I've come up with is a method. I won't say it's the best method, but it's the one I'm going to use for now uh, on graphing a line of points. So. If you remember our candles up here when we did a set data set, uh, that sets the uh, the p uh, data set zero. So we want to set a new data set. So if we say get xyplot.set data set, um, now we're going to set data set one. And here we're going to create a method called generate data point set and this will handle exactly what we need it to do uh, the return it returns the right thing which is going to be a uh, uh, I believe it's a it's an XY data set so if we say create method XY data set generate data set in here is where uh, things happen. So we want to create a time series. Uh, TS1 equals new time series. Got to give it a name. Series 1. I'm going to loop through our data points. So data point, point, and points. Uh, let's see. TS1.add new time series data item the period and the uh, value so the period this is what took me a long time to figure out what goes in here so with the with the value it's pretty easy it's just the point which is our double inside of the um, point class but the period this is what really threw me for a while so the um, the way that they have it set up is that you pass in a new uh, a class here, and the class that we're going to use is what's called a second. This is a time period uh, class, and I'm not sure how exactly it works because it seems like you could use their second class or their hour class or their day class and it really still just plots the same thing so I figured I would use the smallest not the smallest it goes down to microsecond but at least use second that's the smallest that I really care about even though what I'm passing it could be all sorts of different types of data and we'll see that uh, in a few minutes but that was the part that really had me stumped for a while now after we've created this series, we need to create a time series collection. 
and what we do is we say collection dot add no not add change listener dot add add I'm sorry add series ts1 and then we return collection now this will whoops this will add this time series to our graph however uh, it creates a time series line that is not exactly desirable. So let's run this again. Uh, I apologize for the disclaimer. This disclaimer is that um, if you use this software to do forex trading, uh, you will lose money. Don't rely on anything that you see in this uh, video because you most likely will lose money. Don't trust anything that you see in this video about trading or the possibility of making money because most likely you will lose money. Uh, this software will um, cause you to blow out your account. So uh, the person behind writing this software cannot be held liable for any harm that you might incur to yourself by using the software. Uh, and if I haven't said it already, in using this software, you probably will lose money and uh, you will not have any when you're done using the software. So this is the disclaimer. So when we run this, we'll see this kind of odd looking line. Uh, hopefully it comes up tonight. All right, it seems to just be throwing, um, it says a time series collection cannot be cast to a OH data set. Um, so we, we, have to, we have to set up what this new data set is gonna be. And we can actually do that in this area here where we initialize the chart. So we have a renderer, which is kind of a default renderer for our, our bars, but we need to create another one for handling this just line. So if we say chart.get xyplot.map dataset, uh, let's see, dataset to range axis. Uh, one zero. I found this example online, so I'm not really sure what it does. Map data set to range axis. Axis. There we go. So XY line and shape renderer. This, we, we create a new renderer and we're gonna add some options to it. So set series, um, is it set series paint? Set series paint, yes. And so the series is going to be zero. Now that's not the bars, that's the, the series for this next, oh, you'll see in a minute. Because down here, what I do is I say chart.get xyplot.set renderer. And the renderer is for one. And so this basically, for, for data series one, we're gonna have it be this renderer versus the, the default data series is for the bars. <clears throat> so inside of this renderer you can have multiple time series now we might want to do want to plot two or three different lines at a time so the for the zero with line we're going to set its color to be color dot black 
and then we're also going to set its shape. So this is when the line changes angle, uh, or on each point, what is the shape going to be? And so we want to set series shape. This is going to be zero. It's going to be a new rectangle. Uh, and I think we can just give it a width and a height. And we're going to give it a width and height of zero. So essentially, we're not going to, at each point, we're not going to render anything graphical. The line is just going to change directions. And so then the last thing is we have to do uh, data set render order data set uh, let's see render order dot forward so that sets up at least for the series that sets up the line so now if we run this uh, we should be good And there we have it. Look at that. So here is our chart. That black line is our EMA. It looks right. I don't know if it's actually right. But uh, I think this was an EMA, what was this, EMA 20? So let's just run this again with a little bit longer line. This should be a little bit smoother. So instead of doing EMA 20, let's say we do EMA 50. Let's run it again. And here we see even a smoother line. So um, for this video, uh, that should be it. We've we've rendered an EMA on the graph. You can see that it skipped the first uh, 50 entries, and then it started to render it. So um, we finally got our graph. And from here, we're going to um, start talking about instruments. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not instru not instruments. Indicators. Uh, so that we can use indicators instead of instruments um, to to rep to graph and to do different things. So anyway, thanks for watching, and this was the Jump Programmer.